Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Red Death Studios. This is actually the first video that I've made. Um, today, basically what I want to talk to you about is why I stopped recording my, like my tracking process and also my, my mixing and mastering process, like why I stopped doing everything in Logic Pro X and why I split it up into two different applications. Right, so today, um, I'm currently using Studio One version four, the artist edition. Um, and I'll go through and I'll, I'll I'll do my tracking process there. And then I'll export kind of everything out, for lack of better terms, and then I'll import the project into Logic Pro X. And that's where I do all my mixing and, and uh, my, my in-the-box mastering. In order to achieve similar results i know everybody you know well i can't say everybody but a lot of people on youtube basically they tell you it really doesn't matter what you have from a guitar perspective it doesn't matter what your pickups are it doesn't matter whatever you know and they they show you like this incredible sounding mix you know and you've got a schecter omen six with factory schecter pickups and you're like what the flip i can't get that same sound um it's just it's a reality right? You pay for what you get. Um, in this example, I'm going to be using a Ibanez Iron Label series guitar. It's the uh, RG IB602. Um, the pickups in this, it's got EMG 60s in the bridge. And no, excuse me, it's got EMG 60s in the neck and it's got EMG 81s in the bridge, right? So um, if you're going to be trying to get a similar sound to what I have going on here, you pretty much need to have the same pickups. Um, from a virtual amp perspective, what I have going on is um, I'm using Positive Grids amp number two. Um, you know, fully licensed, obviously, whatever. It's fantastic. And then once I get the amp styled in and everything, I'll save those and then I'll import them into Bias Effects to um and play around with them there right so definitely recommend if you guys don't have you know any bias products or positive good products to uh to go check them out absolutely fantastic um i'm currently not endorsed by those guys right now just fyi so i don't get any money if you guys go out and buy it <laughs> right um but anyways you know as you can see on my screen right now i've got a i've got a sesh open in studio one four um, this song is called Vertigo. I've done kind of pretty much everything here within the song. Um, and I kind of want to walk through again the workflow perspective and why I use Studio One to track with and why I choose to mix and, uh, and, and master in Logic Pro. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the song. Now note, um, over here on the desk, I've got a... Um, a PreSonus fader port, um, and the fader port helps me with automation and all kinds of stuff. It's fantastic. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, go do that. I'll leave a a link in the uh, the description down below um, for the the fader port and whatever. Um, just FYI, the fader port also comes with the software that you see over here on my screen, um, which is the Studio One version four Artist Edition. Okay, so if you spend the money on the fader port, you also actually get the DAW automatically included. And that's kind of evolving into the story on uh, why I switched up my workflow for some reason. But anyways, let's get to the song. So this is the intro, first verse. Can I hear that piano in the background? Kind of wobbly. I really dig it. Harmonics here on the left and right, 
second uh, distorted guitar trail. Coming to the pre-chorus. And then the chorus. back in the verse <clears throat> so anyways you know the question is why did i switch to to studio one to do the tracking phrase um when i when i got studio one i didn't realize that you were actually limited from a plugin perspective right so i'm not really sure what the algorithm is in the back end but studio one allows certain plugins in your vst folder to appear and others to not appear so for example I've got Easy Drummer, uh, Easy Drummer 2, and that's what I use for my, my drum software, and like only for the, the tracking phase, right? And then when I'm actually ready to, to finalize the project, we'll go out to the bigger studio that we have, um, or I'll go out to the bigger studio that I have, you know, have a session drummer come in and actually, you know, do real drums and whatever, um, you know, because I know there's haters out there too that say like, oh, you know, Studio Drum or uh, Easy Drummer, you, know, you can't get real drum sounds, whatever, whatever. So I just use it for like um, song creating, if you will, from a composition perspective. And then when I'm ready to put something down, like finalize it, then I'll have a session drummer come in um, and and record the drums for us in real real time, if you will. Um, so the thing that I noticed is that when you're limited from a plugin perspective, your raw audio from a tracking perspective, like it sounds a lot better. And then when you bring the project into Logic Pro X, when it comes time to like mixing and whatever, um, you've got a really, really, really solid raw base to mix with, right? Which is something that I really didn't have before. So I'm intentionally limiting myself from plugins. I'm not bussing anything. I'll show you the, the, uh, the mixer here in a second. There's no buses. It's just like left and right, everything. They all live in their own little individual tracks, whatever. And then when I take the the song from here into Logic, that's when I start, you know, doing your top-down mixing and stuff. And if you're not familiar with the top-down mixing approach, um, I'll include a link uh, in the description as well uh, so you can go out and check out one of these videos. I think it's like two hours long, but it's probably, you know, the best two hours that I've spent in my life, right? Um, so anyways, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to open up uh, the mix window in Studio One. Let me hide my inputs. Um, and you can kind of see what I have going on here, right? So over here on the left, I've got all my drum tracks, right? Same color. And then I've got my piano track, right? Um, the presence track is another virtual instrument that I'm currently not using right now. Um, I, when I record my bass, um, what do I have it going through? Hold on. <clears throat> My bass, I've got it going through an SCR DI from Ampeg. It's like the best money that I've ever spent in my life on a piece of like external gear from a bass standpoint. It legit brought my bass to life. Like you have no idea. Um, so <laughs> I sound like a freaking ad machine. Um, I can include an Amazon link. Um, is, is well for the, the SR or SCR DIs. If you guys are interested, just put your comments down there below and let me know if you were unable to find it and I can, uh, try to help you out there. Um, but anyway, so what I do is I'll, I'll open up two tracks. I'll just have a DI, which is like a raw base, right? Um, and then I'll have the processed signal, which basically, as you can see here, it just runs through a, uh, hold on one second. Um, you know, it runs through a gate, which I have disabled right now, an EQ, and then it goes into bias effects, right? And the bias effects is where basically I take the Ampeg signal um, and just modify a little bit more with, 
uh, more Ampeg gear within that software, right? Um, I've got five overall guitar tracks from a distortion perspective, and then I've got um, two ambient guitar tracks, which are panned hard left and ha uh, hard right. When I say ambient, I mean kind of like a Tesseract, kind of ambient reverby kind of delay guitar sound, right? Um, again, I always go through a, uh, a delay or excuse me, a gate currently. Well, I can't say currently, but when I recorded this, I went through a gate and EQ and then bias effects. Um, I've got a compressor gate, a four channel compressor gate that I actually just got hooked up a couple of days ago and I'm doing some tests with it right now. Um, so I'm actually handling my external gate and compression outside of the box. So it essentially goes into my, uh, my Bluetooth V2, which is a PreSonus uh, two channel tube mixer. If you haven't checked that out, I strongly recommend looking into it because it's literally taken my recordings to that next level, right? So um, it's probably some of the best money that I've spent, right? So it goes into my, my Bluetooth V2, the two channel tube compressor. Um, you know, on the guitar side, I've got my gain probably set to like, you know, 10 o'clock approximately. And then also the tube um, heat, for lack of better terms, I've got that set to about 10 uh, as well. Um, and then that runs into a, uh, a four channel um, noise gate compressor limiter that I have. Uh, it's from Behringer. Um, it's not bad at all, right? And that's just to basically cut the signal um, so that I don't have to do as many things in the box, if you will, right? So helps from a productivity perspective. Um, now, if you want, actually, I'm going to try to keep this video short, right? So if, if you want to learn more about the effects processing chain and stuff that I use on my guitars, um, vocals, which will, I'm actually going to do a separate video on vocals and how you mix those and whatever. Um, but if you like the sound that you hear and everything, put some comments down below. And if I get enough comments about, you know, Hey, how did you, um, dial in your bias effects settings or, you know, how'd you get your ambient, whatever put together? Um, I'll, I'll actually create another video for that. Right. Cause I think that's a good idea. So essentially, <clears throat> um, at the end of the day, you know, a, a lot of people like not here on YouTube, cause again, this is my first video, but, um, a lot of, a lot of people that well, I've seen a lot of people asking, how do you take your easy drummer tracks that you have like separately, uh, like the, the, the multi-track tracks, um, how do you export those into separate, uh, separate audio tracks? Um, when you export them into separate audio tracks, when you bring the whole project into logic, you know, your kick, your snare top, your snare bottom, your hat, your toms, your overhead, your room, your mono room, et cetera, et cetera. They're all on individual little tracks. Why is that important? Well, because then you can process everything individually and in logic pro, obviously you have more options from an effects perspective, right? So here you're extremely limited and that's okay, right? Because we just want raw audio. We don't really care about anything else. We just want to make sure that the overall mix in general sounds good. Another trick, um, you know, from a gain staging perspective and all that, you want to make sure that your overall output on your master fader is at a minimum of minus 6 dB. Okay. Because that minus 6 dB, when it translates externally to another application, you're going to be about minus one to zero approximately. Right. Uh, well, let me rephrase, maybe like minus three and you'll have headroom, right. Or the ability, um, in your top, your top down mixing approach to add your limiter on the master fader, your EQ, excuse me, EQ limiter, whatever. And that helps you, re, you know, increase your sound floor and get more powerful sound. You can make it louder. Um, and it sounds, <laughs> dude, it sounds fantastic. But anyways, all right. So here, essentially what you do, um, you know, is you'll grab your, uh, your tracks. Usually here in studio one, what I do is I'll, I'll merge, um, my, my MIDI tracks, right? So right click, um, and merge events, right? And then it creates one kind of MIDI file and you'll come over here, right? So you click, hold shift, click, merge, right? Shift, click, 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 merge. <clears throat> and I've noticed that when you do this, um, the exporting process actually takes less time. Cause if you have a whole bunch of individual little clips, 
it'll go through and process each clip. So if you have 17 clips, it'll do the same process 17 times, for example. So I usually take a couple of minutes and merge everything together so it only has to go through once. And then once you do that, over here, you just right-click um, and you export. Wait, hold on. Right-click. Is it here on the track itself? Hold on. I'm still new to this one. Ah, here we go. Sorry. So um, after you have the whole, uh, your, your MIDI event selected, you literally like legit right click on the track and you go to transform, um, transform to audio track. Okay. And then what that does, let me close this uh, project out really quick. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to open up another one, which is Vertigo Premix. Right. So, oh, another thing before you do that, save it, right? Save the project one time and then do a save as, right? So I do a save as um, premix because that way I know that this project is getting ready to go over to logic. And as you can see, now you've got all of your drum tracks here, right? And if you look down at your mixer, um, which I have on another window, hold on, or another uh, monitor, give me a second. Now you can see that there's no easy drummer um, plugins or anything like that. And at the end of the day, it really just keeps things like super simple and lightweight, right? So we'll listen to it one time over here. How does it sound? And notice how that snare, that snare is really dry, I remember, because I took all the effects off of it during the mixing, or excuse me, during the export process. So we'll have to fix that dry snare over in Logic. chorus and the chorus. It's ready to go, right? <clears throat> so what you would do here, right, is you would basically, um, you know, you would select your, your marker up on the top, right? You would export this out and you're only going to export the, um, uh, hold on one second. You're going to export your stems. Right. And then when you export your stems, it literally makes each one of these tracks its own individual uh, WAV file or AIFF, whatever, you know, you, you, the, the format that you select. And then a little window will pop up here in the center. Once that window pops open, if you have logic, um, you're going to open it. Right. So now we're going to go through the logic opening process. Okay. Give me a second here. I've got some old uh, auto map software here, so it gives me a couple of warnings uh, on the other monitor. I need to get rid of those because apparently Catalina doesn't like auto map from Novation. Um, it's got some scanning stuff that happens from my Slate Digital uh, plugins. So here is the project that we've we've exported, right? Um, Normally, you would just go, you know, create new project like a blank project, and then just drag um, all of the 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 files that you have in the other folder. You, you'll you'll see the other window that's open, right? You just drag all those files literally um, into here, right? <clears throat> and now you have all of your uh, all of your tracks. Now. They're not going to come in like this. They're not going to come in organized, right? So you're going to have to organize them. I always keep my drums on the top, right? Uh, pianos, etc. cetera, here. Um, I've got a parallel drum compression channel that I create, a verb snare, or excuse me, a snare verb, um, reverb channel that I create, right? So if we go here from a mixing perspective, um, you know, you can see that I'm sending things out here to, to, to verb. So snare top and bottom, I send out to the verb bus, right? Everything here, with the exception of the hat, um, I'm sending out to my parallel compression bus, which is here, okay? Um, in this instance, guys, I'm using uh, the slate, um, the virtual mix rack, right? So here's some, some settings on that. Um, if you guys are interested, again, in you know, what is parallel compression, 
um, how do I do it? You know, what is Slate Digital, whatever. Post some comments down below, and I'm totally down to create other videos for you guys, right? We're here to, to help out, and we're here to help you guys learn um, in days or weeks what it's taken me years to, to learn, right? So definitely want to help out. Um, so anyways, once you're here and you get everything aligned, you've got all your, uh, your different buses and everything created and um, what I call an instrument, um, some or instrument bus versus a vocal bus. You know, I, I keep my, um, all of my instruments right before they go to the master fader. I keep them separate, all the instruments from the vocals. So I have like basically two sums or two buses. And then both of those go out to the master fader where I do a little bit of additional treatment there. Um, just schools of hard knocks, you know what I mean? So this is how it sounds in logic after, you know, the, uh, the effects have been added, right? I hope you guys dig it. Um, again, I'm just trying to keep a short video. Um, you know, just kind of like an intro to, to what we do here at Red Day Studios and the quality and everything that we have. Um, you know, if you're interested on, you know, once things get into logic, what do you do? Um, you know, what are the different sums from, a, you know, a chorus guitar perspective that you need to add from a rhythm guitar perspective? Um, you know, how do I make my guitar solo sound really cool, you know, in the middle of everything, you know, et cetera. If you guys are interested in that, um, just post the comments below, man, and we'll, we'll make other videos. Um, I usually try to be, you know, really quick from a response perspective, so I'll respond to you faster than I create a video. Um, you know, I'll usually create my videos on Friday nights or Saturdays and then publish them uh, either Saturday or Sunday. Um, so if you, if you post a comment and whatever and you want a video, you know, uh, if it's two days from a Friday or a Saturday, then you got to wait a couple of days, right? Because uh, I'm, a, I'm a working YouTuber, right? Um, but anyways, you know, as always, uh, hit the like button, um, hit, hit subscribe so you guys are always update with, or excuse me, up to date with, uh, you know, the, the new content and stuff. Um, we're pretty much just going to be covering stuff from a home studio perspective and maybe kind of video editing stuff like YouTubing, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I use ScreenFlow? How do I use SoundFlower? You know, all these other kind of different questions, you know, but mostly you know, the whole purpose, I guess, of this channel is just to, uh, to help all of you guys out there really learn how to kind of do what I do and learn it fast, you know, so it doesn't take you five or six years to, uh, to get it done because nobody wants to wait five or six years, especially this guy, even though that's how long it took. But <clears throat> um, I thank you very, very much for stopping by. And again, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Um, post your comments below in the new videos that you want to see, and I'll get them out as fast as I can. So mahalo for the support, guys, and uh, we'll definitely talk to you soon.